Welcome back, SCF kids. Are you ready? Ready to see what happens next in our story? If you remember from last week, we talked about how Daniel had another dream. And in his dream, God told him that he was gonna send a perfect king. A king who would reign forever. Remember who it was? Yeah, it was Jesus. Jesus was gonna come. He would be perfect and he would reign forever. In today's episode, we're gonna meet a new prophet. We've met lots of prophets in the past weeks, but today's prophet is by the name of Obadiah. And he had a message for the people of Edom. So let's see what that message was. Would you guys check out this tower? Isn't it the most amazing tower you've ever seen in your entire life? I've been working on this thing all day, hours it's taken me. I wanna keep it forever. I wanna show everybody how amazing it is. What's that, mom? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right there. I can load the dishwasher. Just one more block. Okay, I'll be right back. She'll never know it's me. I'll just give it a little tap and down she'll go. Who cares if she worked on this thing all day? They're my blocks anyways. And I could do it way better. Shh, she'll never know. Oh no, all my hard work. Who would do such a thing? God sent a message to Obadiah the prophet in a vision. God had news about a country called Edom. The people who lived in Edom were like brothers to the people in Judah. Both groups were descendants of Isaac's twin sons, Jacob and Esau. The people in Edom came from the family of Esau. God's people came from the family of Jacob. The people of Edom didn't love God. They worshiped false gods. They lived in the mountains and trusted the mountains and their own strength to protect them. The people thought that they were better than everyone else. The Edomites didn't get along with God's people in Judah. When the Babylonians took over the city of Jerusalem, the people in Edom just sat back and watched. They didn't try to protect Judah. The people of Edom even went into Jerusalem and took things that didn't belong to them. God said he was going to punish Edom. 
Listen up, God said. Out of all the nations, you will be the least important. No one will like you. You were proud and I will punish you. You thought you were safe, but I will bring you down. Obadiah's message for the people of Edom was bad news. God was going to allow Edom's enemies to take away everything they had. Even the people who were their friends would steal from them. Many people would be killed. God said to Edom, you were cruel to the people in Judah, so you will be punished. When Judah needed your help, you stood back and did nothing. You laughed and were happy that they were attacked. Every bad thing you did to others will be done to you. The day of the Lord is near, Obadiah warned. Every evil thing you did to others will be done to you. God said that the bad things that were happening to his people in Judah were only for a little while. God would deliver his people. But when I punish you, Edom, God said, everything will be destroyed. Obadiah's message from God had good news for God's people. My people will have the land that belongs to Edom, God said. God's people would return to their homes and God would take care of his people. But Edom's punishment was forever. Like God's people were mistreated by the people of Edom, Jesus was mistreated by his own people. God will punish sin. Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment we deserve for our sin. We can trust Jesus to make wrong things right. All right, you guys, I was able to rebuild and restore my tower after I found out that my brother was the one who destroyed it and made such a huge mess. I mean, we chatted, he apologized, and I forgave him. But he still had consequences for his actions. My mom took his phone away for the rest of the week. So what do you think? Do you think that we should pray for people to be punished for the wrong things that they do? Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Neve from Wilson, North Carolina asks, Can I pray for God to punish people who do bad things? All right, Neve, gotta be honest with you. The answer is, is yes. Um, you, you could. Now notice I'm kind of stressing that you could pray for that because God is just and when people are disobeying him, we should be praying for God to be vindicated and, and punish all evil and wickedness. So you could. But now let's move on to what I would say you should do. Uh, I don't think you should do that. Instead, I think the posture that we should have as believers is the exact opposite. I believe we need to be praying not for God to punish them, but for God to open their eyes, to change their hearts so that they would follow him, they would stop doing evil. And so we need to pray for our enemies for good things, not really pray for them to be punished by God. Uh, we see this in the scriptures, don't we? That, that the Bible tells us that we should pray for our enemies, we should love our enemies. We see Jesus doing this. We can't forget this, that we were his enemies when he came to earth and he loved us and he laid his life down so that we could be saved. He had every right to punish us, but he didn't. Don't forget that. You deserve judgment. I deserve judgment. But God thankfully gave us grace instead. And you know, even when I mess up, when I sin, I'm grateful to know that there are people who love me enough to pray for me, good things for me, uh, not difficult, not bad things for me, not judgment for me. And the same is true of you. So can you pray for that? Yes, you can. Should you pray for that? I really do not believe you should. I think it's better that we pray for good things, for blessings even, so that God can change their hearts, that he can change their lives, and we can see them glorifying God instead. So here's a question to think about. How do you think praying for your enemies or showing kindness to them could change how you feel about them?
Okay, I found a new purpose for my tower blocks. We're gonna play Jenga for our memory verse game today. So I've got words to the verse on my blocks and I'm gonna take them out. Whatever words I get out are ones that are gonna come out of the verse until of course it tumbles over, okay? So let me find one to start here. Ah, let's take this one. It says, I have, okay? So I'm gonna take that out of the verse and would you read it with me on the count of three? One, two, three. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Did you notice something different? Yeah, we've started a new unit today, so it's a new memory verse. Hands up if you've heard this one before. One of my favorites. Okay, do you think I can get another one without knocking it over? Let's go for this one. It says, I know. All right, let's read it together. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Ooh, let's go for this one. It says, prosper you. All right, let's read it again. One, two, three. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. What do you think? Which one should I go for? That looks like a good one. To give. Let's read it again. One, two, three. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Oh, not that one. Not that one, people. This one, the plans. On the count of three, one, two, three. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm getting a little nervous here, guys. What about this one? Oh no, ah! All right, I guess that's a wrap for our memory verse game. So practice up that verse this week. We're gonna be back at it next week. But for now, I want you to grab your Bible and let's open it up and we'll see what God has to say for us today. So I'll meet you back here in just a second. got my Bible. You got yours? Okay. Open it up to Jeremiah, just past the center of your Bible, chapter 20, verse 13. When you've got it, we'll read it together. It says, sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. He rescues the oppressed from the power of evil people. So God's people here in the story are oppressed. That means they were in trouble. They were having hard times. And we're learning that God rescues us. He rescued his people. He sent us Jesus, the perfect rescuer. He is so faithful and I wanna to sing to him now. So would you join me? Come on, clap your hands. Here we go. That's it.
So Obadiah was a prophet. And if you remember, a prophet is somebody who hears God's message and then takes it to the people. So we have various ways that we communicate with people today, right? We can text them or send an email. Maybe we call them on the phone or there's even radio announcements. There's so many different ways that we can get a message out to people. But Obadiah, you know what he had? He didn't have a cell phone. He couldn't send emails. He didn't have a radio but he did have his mouth. He had to share God's message with the people, 
just by using his mouth. It would have been a difficult thing for him to do. It would have taken a lot longer than it would take us today, but Obadiah was faithful. He had a good news for the people of Judah that they were gonna be set free, but he had some not so good news for the people of Edom that they were gonna be punished for their sin. Obadiah had a really difficult job, but he was faithful to what God asked him to do. So let's pray. God, thank you for giving us your word. We thank you for inviting us into your kingdom. We are humbled to know that you do not treat us as our sin deserves. Instead, you show us mercy and grace. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen.